What's up guys, it's Project back with probably the last build I'm making till DLC. And this time, finally an excuse not to use Tengen, Poison, or Honda Clan. Welcome to Deadeye, my first bow build ever and the best bow build you can make. Capable of doing way more damage than most other melee builds, one-shotting foes from a distance, and only needing two buffs for optimal damage. And all of this was done with a plus nine bow. One could say, are bow builds the best builds in the game? No. Hell no. Despite what you just saw, it's easy to cherry pick and make a build seem better than it actually is in a video. So I'm here to refute that claim, bow builds are not the best builds in the game. While the damage is no lie, it's absolutely strong. But damage isn't everything, and max damage bow build setups have huge flaws. The first can be seen from the early Eclipse or any other bow video. Notice barely any human bosses being killed in bow videos. Well, it's because bow damage against humans sucks, dealing a fraction of the amount of damage to them likely due to hidden resistances, whereas something like an EI build can do upwards of 36k damage one-shotting them, these bow builds struggle to get past 15k per hit, and all the footage you're seeing for the whole video is with level sync off. So bow builds are only good against yokai bosses. But that's fine, right? Nearly all the endgame content is, well, against yokai. But there's more problems. To do the damage you saw, you have to use Eagle Eye, a ninja skill that requires you to aim at a target to charge up and get the full damage boost from the effect at 5 times power, which takes roughly 7 to 8 seconds. The buff itself also only lasts 30 seconds, and the max you can carry is 5. The big downside is, Losing focus of the target, i.e. they move out the way, degrades the charge power. So in co-op, what most people should probably be doing for farming, makes this build severely underwhelming and downright worse than most melee setups I've played, if playing with randoms. Otakumaru, everyone's favorite co-op farm, moves around like a mofo in co-op and teammates can knock enemies out of para, ultimately trashing your damage to where you'll mostly be doing 7 to 9k damage at best to things without charge. Not to mention, a single hit can knock you out of aiming since there's no hyper armor, which again can reduce Eagle Eye's effectiveness, thus the build's effectiveness. But by far, the biggest problem a max damage bow build has is ammo. Again, it's easy to cherry pick and show each clip with max ammo and think everything's okay, but the reality is, this thing chews through ammo super fast. The thing that makes this build strong at all is Sacred Arrow. And Sacred Arrows are craft only. Or you have to donate bows to the clan to get more. When I started the build, I had 170 Sacred Arrows saved up. After getting the clips and doing some co-op, I dropped down to zero and actually had to forge more to get the rest of the clips. And this is with 52% untouched ammo, the max amount for a max damage setup like mine. More so, Shrine doesn't refresh your arrows, so if you run out during a mission, you're SOL. Normal arrow damage sucks balls, so the build entirely depends on Sacred Arrow, and I'm telling you now, you will lose all your arrows over time. Especially doing lots of co-op, which are the main stages people should be farming for loot, so these short one-shot boss stages are mostly irrelevant before you think, well, you should never run out. No, no one actually farms those stages, and they're merely a display of power. We don't have Marabashi or Hyakiyagyo boss rush like stages yet, so co op is the go to for farming. And contribution wise to the team, bow sucks for co op outside of paralyzing enemies, which any build could have without needing a dedicated bow build. So I want to make you aware of its massive shortcomings, since most are likely not familiar enough with the build type to know from watching how truly good or bad it is. But despite trashing on it, I'm gonna give you guys two options if attempting a bow build. The first is my actual build used in this video. It's the best bow build for overall damage. But the one I actually recommend if you're serious about using a bow build and just a bow as your primary attack is full Yadagarasu. In total, you'll have 70 to 80% untouched ammo, which sustains the build much longer. Although regardless, eventually you'll run out of sacred arrows if you're doing serious co-op. It is what it is. Alternatively, you can make a hybrid build where you melee most of the content and just save arrows for bosses, but at that point, 
just go full melee and kill nearly as fast with, say, my Beyblade Axe build or my Snowman Adachi build or the Blender. But for now, let's focus on the build like normal. The max damage setup requires Deluxe Edition armor set. If you didn't get the Deluxe Edition for Neo 2, then again, just use the Yadagorasu build. But if you do have the Deluxe Edition and you want the max damage, two pieces of the first samurai gives 30% bullseye damage. Chest and waist mounted archer set for bow damage percent and black fox mask for magic damage bonus. Even though it sucks balls, you don't have much alternatives because these are the main things that affect bow damage. Kingo set is another to consider, although I don't recommend it since you only go behind like one or two bosses and the rest you'll want to aim for the weak point. So Kingo is not actually best in slot in majority case. For melee weapon, you want spear, sword, or dachi with thrust damage permastat. You cannot roll thrust damage as a stat, so the permastat ones are a must. Like I mentioned with Kingo, backstab damage stat isn't worth using. Sword is actually the best one since it actually scales in both heart and skill, which are your 99 stats. Because you can only roll one damage stat, you're pretty much free to have whatever else on. Secondary weapon is Omnio Austerities Odachi. It gives magic power to boost the fox mask. The main range weapon you'll use for shooting is Ryumin's. It's the best bow because it can have three damage effects versus two of borehole, dealing more damage up close. From afar, it's only slightly worse by a couple percent and most encounters can be done up close, so Ryumin is best in slot. But it's up to you. I'd rather gain 20% damage up close than 5% damage from afar. Make sure to remodel scaling to AA in heart and skill. And again, all clips were with this plus 9, so you could get slightly higher numbers with a plus 10. Your secondary is Golden Boy for bow damage percent from the set bonus. Armor. Primary stats you want are flat attack, untouched ammo, and magic power on everything. For mounted archer pieces, you'll want to forge ones that have an inheritable symbol already. So the opposite of what you try to do normally, because otherwise you'll only be able to inherit one inheritable as opposed to two. So pretty important. Again, forge them with inheritables already, so they have more slots open to transfer on inheritables. Other than those three effects, running speed, untouched ninjutsu, and key are nice to have as well, alongside luck. Purple effects on waist and boots, and the rest is yada yada. Accessories! Divination board is best in slot for the magic power. Get untouched ammo on both, as well as para accumulation on both to make paralyzing enemies easier. Yasa can roll magic power too, so try to get that on it as well. Stats! Oh baby, a triple! 99 stats, heart and skill for bow damage, but last but not least, magic. Sacred arrow oddly scales with magic, so having 99 boosts its damage significantly. It's important to know though that magic power itself, however, does not boost sacred arrow. So the boost is directly tied to the actual magic stat, and not magic power. I'm unsure if it's a bug or not, but it is pretty odd. Get around 11 decks for ninjutsu stuff, and again, all clips were with level sync off. So with level sync on, you'll do around 10% less damage. Spirits! No Tengen! Yay! But for Bo, you only got two choices. Bipolar Wolf and Yadagrasu. For some reason, and this is likely a bug that could be patched in the future, but Bo benefits from melee damage versus unscathed enemy, despite it not being melee, so... Wolf gives 10% damage increase on first hit, so it's the best damage spirit. Ideally though, Yadagarasu gives the best sustain with the 20% untouched ammo. But the reason it's actually sorta of bad, is it adds fire damage to your shots. This completely disables you from paralyzing enemies, as it overwrites even the stun or poison arrow effect. So between 10% more untouched ammo, and not paralyzing and risking enemies hitting you, which these builds do get hurt badly from enemies, I'd stick with Wolf primary and Bird secondary. For cores, Nurona offers melee damage versus unscathed, and Tesu offers backstab damage. I use Kasha as the third for running speed and to push enemies around, but Enki or Waira are runner-ups for that panic button as, if you are using the Wolf, you're stuck with the stinky brute form burst counter, which is too slow in many cases for countering grabs and such. Clan, you want Mori for the increased arrow counts and bonus bow damage. I'm not max clan, so I'm unsure of the max bow damage percent, unless 26% is the max, let me know in the comments, but yeah, 
Mori Clan is the only choice due to needing every arrow you can get. Skills for sword, you mainly use it as a stat stick for bow, getting all the passes from it. You can squeeze in an EI or parry if you want, but the best mystic art is salvation unless you plan to attack with the sword, in which case you want execution. You want to reset your samurai tree so you can max up range attack damage nodes. And I also get flux 2 as well. Ninja, para arrow, eagle eye is all you really need. Paralytic ground fire is mostly just a meme shot birdman, I don't use it otherwise. Quick change is probably a consideration given the build's lack of defense. Catwalking and Sneak Thief are great if you want to Atake farm solo with this. You bypass everything and just kill Atake for fast drops every 3 minutes or so. And lastly, you want Concealment for boosted bow damage. Omnio, Barrier for key regen. Protection for safeguarding that life boy. Extraction for cash buff. Luckbringer for them drops. And Weakness Talisman for a minor damage boost. Reduce defense from ranged hit effect equals the same as this in most cases, so it's not worth building around in case you're wondering, and optimally, you're gonna one or two shot anyhow, so it'd be useless. And lastly, Awakening for faster casting. And that's my Deadeye build. Sorry for dogging on bow, bow damage can be insane, but it just has a short lifespan, and aiming is pretty tedious in co-op, and isn't worth the headache just for the juicy damage. I would more recommend Ninja King build than this if you want range. At least there you can refresh kunai from shinobi boxes or shrines, you can lock onto enemies, you can mix in feathers or atake, and you kill humans arguably faster despite the less overall damage. But let me know your thoughts on bow. Do you think it's still worth building despite what I ranted about? DLC news, maybe in a couple weeks? Pretty please? News, mind you, I don't expect DLC to hit till June or even July based off what we know so far. But I hope you guys liked the video, if not learned something from it, smash that like button if you did and subscribe for more Neo 2 epicness. Go Rika go! Show that you're